Let's open our Bible from John chapter 7 and uh, verse 37. And Jesus is saying this, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. I want you to just imagine this. This is the Feast of Tabernacles. It's the, the great feast, the big deal in Jerusalem. And he stands up in front of this immense crowd and shouts it out. If anyone is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. And then he goes on to say, he who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. This he's speaking of the Spirit, of course, that they who believe on him should receive. I wanted to just uh, let you go home this weekend realizing that actually it's not one journey we are on, it's three journeys we are on. There's an inward journey, and there's an upward journey, and there is an outward journey. Most of us think that, well, now that you've come to Jesus, let's just get with our mission and get on the outward journey. But there's much more to it than that because, you see, it's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. We need to come unto him and receive from him. And there's many scriptures that we could illustrate this with where uh, it, it's, it needs to, the kingdom needs to come in the inside of you first and foremost. And as the kingdom is strong within you, uh, and your needs are met more or less, and your bodies heal more or less, and, and you get sort of functioning in, on your own way, sustained by that drink, so to speak, that has come into your heart. Now, there's a freedom and a joy to be able to worship God in spirit and in truth. And so, this whole idea uh, you, you, need to, you need to be comfortable with the fact that you are needy. Are you okay with that? Turn to your friend and say, you're needy. <laughs> but you're not a victim anymore. Because the King of kings and the Lord of lords has come to live in you. And, uh, you know, if... if when the, when the kingdom of God comes in you, then life begins at that point. There's, Jesus talked about being born again, and I love that. We can be born again, born into a life in the Spirit that now gives you significance, now gives you purpose, now gives you meaning. You're no longer an orphan. You're a child of God. You're a son of God. And so that needs to be brought onto the, into the inside of you. And it's at that point we can begin to worship and have this vertical relationship with God our Creator who we realize is up there, but He's also in here. And so there's life going in. And, and we have a, a, an upward journey where we're saying, God, I want more of you. And we begin to hunger and thirst after Him. Do you remember when you first heard about being filled with the Holy Spirit and baptized in the Holy Spirit? And boy, that set me on about a seven or eight month um, mission where I had to beg God enough to finally convince him I was serious or something so that he would fill me with the Holy Spirit and let me speak in tongues. It was an amazing time. But I realized that there's this vertical relationship that needs to be sincere. And how many have had God meet them in a powerful way that it seemed like it just about turned you inside out? Uh, I know what it's like to have God touch us so deeply that I didn't think I was going to live through it. And, you know, part of me longs for that again. The upward journey. And then there's the outward journey. And that's your mission. Matthew 28 uh, is the, one of the references of the Great Commission. And you can tell this is like a 45-minute message that you're getting in five, so... Uh, we're going to skip some of it, but never mind. The, the last part of this 
is where he says, go. And um, that's a good word, isn't it? Go. Just turn to your friend and say, go. Matthew 28 and 18, he's saying, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me, so therefore go. Go and what? Go and make disciples of all nations. I love what Lance was talking about. It's not just go and take the turf, but make disciples and hold that ground. And so that there's, there's a lasting uh, uh, kingdom that's built there for the glory of God. The kingdom of God is established. Go into the nations, make disciples of all the nations, immersing them, baptizing them, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's, that doesn't mean just a baptismal formula, by the way. That's talking about, I want you to immerse them in the very nature and likeness of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. We have an inward journey, an upward journey, and an outward journey that we are all called to. And I find that we need to keep visiting those three emphases as we go through our Christian lives. Because if you've been on the outward journey, how many pastors are here for, let's see, raise your hand if you're, if you're pastoring a church and a congregation right now. Why don't you stand up and let's give these guys a hand, shall we? God bless you. It's amazing. But if we're not careful, we who are pastoring can give out and give out and give out so much and never stop to realize we need to receive also from him. We, there needs to be a coming unto Jesus and drinking of him so that there's a replenishing on the inside of the life that comes only from God. And so out of your innermost being, those rivers need to keep on flowing. It amazes me how that I I'm in touch now with the need that I have of the inward and the upward and then the outward. The me and my needs, him and his, and the emphasis on him, and then emphasis on them, taking this to others in the kingdom of God. In this church, one of the things that has saved us and one of the reasons why the revival has sustained is because we've had an emphasis on me and get the kingdom coming inside of you. See, it's not just a matter of get saved and then off you go, like you wind you up and let you loose on your mission. But there's deep issues of the heart that need to be resolved in many of us, in fact, most of us, in fact, all of us. But we're not in touch with those things, and very often we're so, such orphans in our attitude, you know, and and we're gung-ho and we think, hey, just get out of the way. I'm going to show everybody how to build the kingdom of God here. We don't realize that we're built and created and made to be interdependent on the Lord and on the things of the Spirit. And so I think beginning with Carol, she wanted inner healing to happen. She went for it herself and then she wanted me to get it. And I didn't think I needed it. Because I thought I was, I, I get up in the morning, I go to work, I function, I do this, I do that. You know, I'm full of doing. Or, you know, I'm not dysfunctional in all that sense. But she was astute enough to pick up that there were, there were needs, there were areas of the heart that were not the way God intended it to be. And I've discovered a key in terms of the sequence now that makes it easier for people to get the healing that they need. Now, if I was to survey the men here, how many, how many of you men, don't, don't respond to this, don't put your hands up, but I'm just saying, uh, how many of you men need healing in your hearts of something? Probably not that many hands would go up, but if I asked your wives, I said, what do you think? You know, they're much more likely to say, oh yeah, they need it big time, you know. So, so that, that's the kind of thing that we're dealing with here. And we discovered along the way as we were led by the Spirit of God to get th uh, three primary revelations that deal with that inner journey. 
The, the first one is having to do with a revelation of the Father's love. And I've just observed in myself and in others, when I finally got the revelation of the depth and the richness and the intensity and the permanence and the eternal, eternal aspects of the love of God, it changed me in my heart. It dealt with insecurities where I no longer had to be offend, defensive. And so now if Carol says, well, honey, there's, there's, I just see this going on in your heart like you're acting a bit like an orphan here or this or that's happening, I, 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 most of the time I'm like, oh, really? Well, why don't we pray about that? Because, see, when you're secure in your Heavenly Father's love, you don't overreact and try to justify yourself and say, what do you, who do you think you are criticizing me? I'm as good as anybody else. Who are you to judge? That kind of defensiveness. Is there anybody in this room can get in touch with that? Now, I realize this is not a healing conference, and we haven't been really going down that track, but a lot of you are wondering, what's my next step? Where do I go from here? And I would say, your next step is probably for you. You will be more value to the kingdom of heaven if you deal with your issues and deal with your stuff. When you can come to the Lord and say, first of all, I need the love of my Father to be revealed on the inside of my heart, that is an inward journey that will transition into the upward journey. Because when you get that love revealed, it will so open up your spirit that you will be able to worship him in spirit and truth like never before. We've had testimonies of some of our school here this week that have had exactly that happen to them. And it was amazing from the, the guy who used to be the Ku Klux Klan guy talking about how the love of God absolutely undid him. Are you still in the meeting, sir? Where are you? Wave at me if you're here. It was just a powerful word. What cracked him open? It was the love of God. And so I've just seen again and again, when if we, can, if we can just realize that we've never been loved like this before, just like the man sharing here about his, his asthma healing, he transitioned off of the healing and realized, you know, I've, I've never felt loved like this. Did you catch that? No one's ever loved me like this. And so that is the thing that you're wired for. You, you run on love. You're designed and built and made in the image of the God of love, who is love, and you run on love. And when you get a revelation of how loved you really are, without arguing with him, without saying, ah, oh, but why would he love me? I've done this and that and this and that, and I don't deserve it. We all know that, especially your wives and family know that, especially your husbands know that. You don't deserve it, but it's there for you. This is the inward journey I'm talking about. And when you can have that uh, willingness to say, okay, I want the love of God, and then start to receive the love of God, that will be the beginning of your journey that will turn your life around for the glory of God like never before. It won't be perfect. There'll still be problem people. Of course, there'll still be issues. But the love of God will absolutely change you on the inside out. But see, it's in the, it's in the coming of the Spirit that all of the difference is made. And that's what Jesus was talking about. When we um, think about scriptures from uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and verse 8, he told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they received the promise of the Father. And the promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. He's wanting you and I to come under the same anointing that was actually carried by Jesus because that is the key to empowering you on all three of those journeys. Now, if I ask you this question, 
How many of you want to have a successful mission and outreach in your lives? Just raise your hands if that's you. You want to be fruitful? Wave at me. <clears throat> okay, so that fruitfulness is dependent on how well you do with that vertical side of things on the upward journey where you're, where you're interacting with the living God. And that journey is dependent on how you receive him on the inside so that there's a fullness that comes in there and the orphan dies and the son or daughter of God comes alive. So it's all three of these things that are working together to cause you to be fruitful in your ministry. And you know what? It's the Holy Spirit that will cause you to be successful in all three of those journeys. Because you see, you can't heal yourself up. You can't do any of that on your own. God has to come in power and love and do that work of grace on the inside. Similarly, you can't just discipline your way through to an amazing, overwhelming prayer life. How many have tried that? God, I'm setting my alarm. I'm up at 6 in the morning, and I'm going to pray for one hour if it kills me. <clears throat> Usually he does. What's wrong? We need the Holy Spirit to pray through us. So the success and the key to the upward journey is the Holy Spirit moving and operating through you. Similarly, when it comes to the outward journey, <clears throat> it's the Holy Spirit that's going to make you successful and fruitful. And that's what he says in verse 8. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. When you and I are filled with the Spirit, we are going to be successful in all three journeys of life. Keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. One of the things that Steve and I and all of us on our team are determined to do is keep on coming back to Jesus and drinking of him. And I beg you, don't ever get tired of this part. Because, see, the demands of ministry, it works something like this. And speaking to leaders here, uh, once you punch through, sort of, and, and the anointing is flowing and miracles are happening and God is moving and lives are being touched, there begins to come a demand on your life where people want you, hey, come, come and help us over here. Hey, come over here. Hey, will you come and do a meeting? And, and, and the next thing you know, you're, you're just way too busy. How many would raise a hand and say, you know what, truth be told, I'm way too busy. I so needed this week. I don't know what happened. I just, uh, I, I managed to break through with some common sense and we came, took a, took a week off and came to this conference. But how many are too busy? Too busy with all kinds of stuff. See, when we pull back and get into his presence, get filled up with him, that's the spirit that you're drinking of. The very thing that made you successful can almost be the, the thing of your undoing. I love how Mark DuPont said this one time. I'm trying to remember exactly how his words went, but it was, it was like he was quoting someone. He didn't come up with it, but it went like this. If your output exceeds your input, your upkeep will be your downfall. Did you catch that? <laughs> If your output exceeds your input, your upkeep will be your downfall because it just gets more and more energy to keep all the balls in the air and all the plates spinning. And see, what the Lord is saying is this, I'll give you rest. It's essential, it's absolutely essential that you keep coming unto Jesus and drinking of him. There's another scripture that says this, John 15, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Goes on to say, unless you abide in me, uh, you're going to get into trouble, aren't you? How many want to be pruned or 
Nobody. How many wanted to be purged? Even worse. No. Let's abide in the vine. That's another message. But anyway, let's abide in the vine, shall we? Let's stand up. For I want you to hold your hands out to the Lord for a minute. And tell him, Father, I'm coming unto you to drink right now. After all of the wonderful teaching and all of the wonderful uh, ideas and thoughts and relationships and connections and everything that have been made, Lord Jesus, I really need you. I really, really do. Will you help me find a place where I can find rest for my soul. May I be able to take a week off or three days off a couple of times a year and just go away somewhere just for me so I can drink of you. An oasis for me so I can be replenished deep within my soul. I want you to give yourself permission to take care of you as God's servant. I said, well, I don't know about the money. It's always a miracle to get the money to go and do these things. Don't let that stop you. <laughs> Book a time, plan a time, take one of our leader schools, go away to the mountains, go away to the ocean, do something where you just can have a time with God. Holy Spirit, we're out of time. But I pray that you will continue to burn this message into their hearts all day long, all night long. Lord, re let them remember the three journeys we are on. It's not just outward, Lord. It's inward, and it's upward, and it's outward. And we need all three, Lord, to make a healthy Christian and a healthy church and a healthy body of Christ, but we must be filled with all the fullness of God. We must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we have the audacity to come to you tonight and say, I want more for me. I want more of you. And the good news is you cannot overdose on the Holy Ghost. There's no such thing as too much of God in your life. Father, I want more. In Jesus' name, amen.